What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them together or fix them if they don't quite rank high enough. Now, this week we are still working on the Valor Bard. Um, this video is coming out just a little bit late because, you know what, it is Snappy Bear's birthday tomorrow, so make sure to wish her happy birthday in the comments section down below and so we took a little bit of a vacation we went and saw some some animals at the aquarium and all that good stuff so uh, we had a good time but that's why this video is a little bit late but you know what better late than never and we're going to continue on schedule with the whispers bard as we go forward later this week so let's go ahead and jump into today's video but before we do that make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already we just reached 500 subscribers and we're trying to get to a thousand this year so please help us out it really really helps the channel grow. So the Valor Bard takes some really cool martial aspects and mixes that with the core Bard features. It also improves on the Bardic Inspiration feature, which is kind of the whole point of going Bard anyway, and it really, really adds to its kit, makes it much easier to uh, to really succeed, um, and in a way that's not super complicated, that's not uh, that's not really difficult to learn. Um, this is very beginner friendly, at least for bards, um, so I do recommend this if you haven't played a bard before and you want to play one. This is a very good starting point for you, so definitely highly recommend. And so with that, I wanted to make a very beginner friendly build as well. So we are going to have some light multi-classing, but it's going to be very simple and very easy to follow. So don't worry. This is one where uh, if you haven't multi-classed before or uh, maybe you're a little bit scared to or for whatever reason, this might just be your ticket and you'll still have a really, really fun build that can do a lot of really cool things um, and you can help keep yourself relatively safe. And so I really think that you will enjoy today's build. So let's get started for our race. We're gonna go custom lineage. I really want a feat at level one because I, I also want another feat a little bit later and then I need a bunch of ability score increases. So we are going to start off with custom lineage. So we get a plus two to one stat and a free feat. The feat we're going to take is actually crossbow expert. We're going to be a ranged uh, bard on this one. I know we get access to a bunch of really fun weapons, but you know what? we're gonna use a weapon that we were already proficient with because you know it's fine um, we will gain some extra proficiencies that we will use as we go along so don't worry um, but for right now we're gonna be using a hand crossbow which I think is going to be a lot of fun and we'll use that for pretty much the majority of our of our lifespan unless of course you get some cool magical item as you go about your journey so for our stats very standard here we're going to go with a 17 in charisma a 15 dexterity 13 constitution 12 wisdom 10 intelligence and 8 strength we're going to put our plus 2 into our dexterity actually and so we have two 17s which is pretty cool plus 3 into two of our stats um, as far as equipment goes Pretty standard stuff, but you're going to want to try to pick up a shield as soon as you possibly can, as well as studded leather armor. We're going to be dexterity based, so eventually our light armor is going to outpace if we took medium armor. So you might as well just stick with the light armor and it, it'll be fine. So um, we're going to have more than a plus two to dexterity. We'll be able to use it with our light armor, so you're going to want to try to get studded leather and a shield as soon as you possibly can. Neither of which are super expensive, so you should be able to get those within at least the first five levels reasonably. Um, and so it's not it's not going to be too bad or too far out of the realm of possibility. Um, so let's go ahead and start taking levels. Um, we're going to start with Bard. I, of course... For this one, there were a lot of honorable mentions as far as what I wanted to multi-class with. There's a lot of really good options here, and so I considered starting with a couple of different other classes. Um, we will talk about those at the end of the video, so if you want a little bit of a more complex build, um, I will talk about how you could make this in a different way slightly at the very end of the video, so stick around with, for that. Um, so at level one, we get our spellcasting and our bardic inspiration, of course. So we can help out our friends as a bonus action to add to some of their roles, as well as our spells. As far as cantrips go, pick your favorites. Um, bards have a lot of really good ones. I, of course, always think Vicious Mockery is a good one to bring, um, but you know you can just kind of bring your favorites here. For level one, of course, pick your favorites again. Remember, you are a support class, even though we're going to get all these weapon proficiencies. Um, so we're support. Focus on making sure that you have battlefield control, that you can support your teammates, 
your wounds is always a good one. Um, silvery barbs, I know that that's a bit of a point of contention. Let me know down below what you think of silvery barbs. I personally don't think it's as bad as everybody is saying that it is. I definitely think it's strong for a first level spell, but I would love to know what you think down in the comments for sure. I, I, I want to see what the community thinks about that. Um, at level two, we're going to stick with Bard here. We're going to stick with Bard for a little while actually because I want to uh, kind of blitz to certain features here. So Bard two, we of course get Jack of All Trades, we get Song of Rest, and our Magical Inspiration. Uh, the only thing is that our Magical Inspiration kind of competes a little bit with our third level feature. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind if you are using these rules with uh, Tasha's optional rules where you would get magical inspiration it does bring the power down at least the uniqueness I guess of this bard down from other types of bards um, I definitely think it may think it makes it slightly less effective when you compare it to other bards but it doesn't make it less effective overall you don't lose this feature just because you're using those features and technically you get part of it early which is which is kind of neat so uh, i think it's fine especially if you are the only bard in your party if there is another bard in your party this may not feel as good um, but just something to keep in mind at bard three we get our bonus proficiencies we get our combat inspiration and our expertise because now we get to choose our subclass so our bonus proficiencies give us some really really cool needed uh, armor proficiency that we're not using um, we get some extra weapon proficiencies that we're not using and then we get shield uh, proficiency which we are using so if you already bought a shield go ahead and equip that now um, and it will help bump your ac and that you will you will be happy um, of course make sure you're picking up studded leather armor don't forget about that um, you know scale mail you can use if you want to scale mail right now is only better by one point than your than studded leather would be um so is it worth paying a bunch for scale mail i mean i guess scale mail isn't too ba too bad but you're just going to end up having to go back to light armor later anyway and this keeps you from needing that disadvantage on your stealth checks so i would just get studded leather armor leave the medium armor alone personally unless you're like handed a breastplate i guess um but even then it's like mm, i don't really care at bard four we're gonna pick our first feat of our actual leveling portion here and we're going to go with warcaster so a bit of a problem that we would have been having for a couple of levels is that technically we can't perform the somatic components of our spells while we're holding a shield in one hand and a hand crossbow in the other we would have to sheath it do our wiggly woos and then and then pull it back out with this we now can um, so one thing that's cool is that you know with our crossbow expert we are able to stand in front of somebody at five feet and fire so if somebody gets up in your face it's okay you're not at disadvantage you don't necessarily have to run away in order to get rid of that which is great you get a bonus action attack with the hand crossbow which is always really really nice as well so you've got a really cool thing you can just stand point blank and fire twice which is nice of course um, and so now with this you can still cast your spells as long as you're holding both of those items in your hand and it also helps you with concentration checks there's a reason that i put our constitution lower than our dexterity and it's because i wanted to use this to help beef up our constitution checks in order to maintain concentration concentration is kind of your whole thing on a bar there are a ton of really good concentration spells and you're going to want to take a bunch of them um, and so this is going to really really help you out in the long run at level five we're still going with bard and we get our bardic inspiration upgraded as well as our font of inspiration which is yet another upgrade for our bardic inspiration and we also get third level spells um, again pick your favorites at these low levels there are a lot of really good options um, i would say that you definitely would want to take things like hypnotic pattern and mass healing word um, those are definite takes here at least on this for a support build um, you're wanting to kind of lock up a bunch of enemies at once you've got hypnotic pattern you've got a bunch of guys who need a little bit of healing or some people are going down mass healing word to try to get them back going so i think that both of these things are really really useful um it, it's not super great on like one enemy it's great for a bunch of people um, but i think that that's great i think you can help your entire party out in one go with either of these spells so definitely take one or both if you can Bard six, we get counter charm, I don't care, but we also get extra attack. And I wanted to make sure that we got all that extra attack before I considered doing anything else. Um, and so 
now we can attack twice, which is great. Um, we're ignoring the loading property, and so we can just keep firing like crazy. And so now we have three attacks with our with our hand crossbow, which is really, really cool. So at level seven, we start to realize that uh, that we could we could we could be a little more subtle in, in our ways. We don't necessarily have to always be out and about and, and always be the one that's that's on the front lines if we don't want to. If we need to, great. But we also are learning the the ways that we can be subtle in what we do. We're gonna take a couple levels of rogue, actually. And so I think that this is going to actually really help our kit for a very specific reason. And we'll get to that here in just a second. At level one, we do get several things here. We get expertise, which we already got at level three, but we're gonna get again here, and then we'll get it again at bard 10. So really cool, we get a lot of expertise out skills. Um, our sneak attack is going to be 1d6, so under certain conditions, we will do an extra 1d6 damage. This should be pretty often that you're getting this bonus, just so you know. If your DM is keeping you from getting sneak attack like a lot, then your DM's probably doing sneak attack wrong. Um, yeah, sneak attack is, happens pretty often just it's just part of it and it's what makes being a rogue feel so good you're only ever going to get 1d6 on this build unfortunately but you know what 1d6 is 1d6 that's that's basically an extra attack for you um without the bonuses of course but yeah it's basically an extra attack for you on your hand crossbow which i'll always take a little bit extra damage and then of course thieves can't so you learn a new little language of the of, of thieves and and criminals so that's pretty cool too we're going to continue with Rogue and go Rogue 2 here at level 8, and we get our Cunning Action here. Cunning Action is the whole reason that I took two levels of Rogue, and this allows us to dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. So this is your get out of jail free card. Some big hulking thing gets right up in your face and you don't really feel okay dealing with it you can get out of there as your bonus action. So, you know, you're not gonna be using Bardic Inspiration every single turn. You only get three per short rest right now because we haven't bumped our Charisma yet. So, you know, you're, you're gonna need these situations where you have a really useful use of your bonus action. This gives you a great use of your bonus action. So I really think this is worth the two levels. Um, I, I think you get a lot out of two levels of Rogue. Um, also for your expertise, I would consider if you don't have a full-time rogue already to consider expertising out your thieves tools because now you get a thieves tools proficiency so you're going to want to pick up a set of thieves tools if you can find some um, usually dms will make those available to you if you want to buy those so yeah i would pick one up and if you don't have a lock picker already you're now the lock picker and you can do all of these crazy things make yourself stu super stealthy and and just kind of go to town it's it's going to be a lot of fun so at Bard 7, we don't get any new features, but we do get access to fourth level spells. And so now is where I'll really start uh, start giving some suggestions here because there are a lot of really good options here once we're, once we're at this level, finally. Uh, we have Charm Monster. I think this is a really, really nice one. It can get you out of certain situations that could be quite dangerous. Uh, Dimension Door, definitely a reliable way to get you and a friend out of a dangerous situation or get you into one also, depending on where you go. Uh, greater Invisibility is a must take here on someone who is trying to be somewhat sneaky. Uh, having the ability to be invisible is always is always really nice and then of course polymorph because you can't leave home without polymorph um, at bard eight we're going to get another asi or a feat here and i'm going to go ahead and take a plus one to charisma and plus one to dexterity making those both 18s so now we have a plus four to both this helps our initiative our bonus to hit on both our weapon and our spells that require that it helps our spell saving throw dc uh, helps our initiative it, it does a lot of a lot of things for us and so we're going to we're going to definitely be happy with that it also helps our armor class here because we're we're using our studded leather or so for all the reasons i want to go ahead and bump those two stats now i do know that bumping constitution also has a lot of value here as far as helping out our concentration checks so if you feel led to to work on that go for it i, I definitely can see the argument here in bumping that to a plus two so I'm kind of relying on Warcaster, and you definitely are going to fail from time to time, even with your advantage. Um, but I, I think that more often than not, you're going to be okay um, as your armor class keeps climbing, as your dexterity keeps climbing. Um, I think I think you'll end up being being just fine. So 
that's that's just how I do it, but you definitely could make a case for doing it in a different way. At bar nine, we get Song of Rest upgraded to a D8 as well as level five spells. Um, I actually would consider taking animate objects here. It does a decent amount of damage, um, and it's a distraction for a lot of your uh, for a lot of your enemies here. So remember that you can use like gold coins and other things like that. You don't necessarily have to go find a bunch of things. You could just pull those out and animate those, and just kind of go nuts. Um, and and it does a decent amount of damage, and more so it's it's a way to keep up with action economy and make sure that they are attacking things other than you and your friends which is always good um, on top of that dominate person is basically a must take on a build like this hold monster and mass cure wounds all really really good brings at bard 10 level 12 overall we get our bardic inspiration upgraded we get expertise again for now the third time and we also get magical secrets for the first time so yes we're two levels late on magical secrets but you know what it's fine it's totally fine here there are a couple that i would consider taking the first i would consider is swift quiver um swift quiver i normally wouldn't recommend on on a bard but swift quiver is kind of useful on something like this so that you don't have to go find all your ammo um you just essentially have enough ammo to go for as long as the spell lasts which is cool it is a bit selfish um for a bard build so you know you are focusing on your own ability to produce ammunition but it can be really helpful and it can make things a lot cheaper for you as well not having to go find all your ammo all the time i would consider it the other thing i would consider instead of that though is wall of force wall of force overall is going to be a better spell as far as battlefield control you can cut off certain uh, escape routes you can trap your barbarian in with something that definitely does not want to be trapped in with your barbarian um, you you can do a lot of really really interesting things um, and put your enemies in really really dis disadvantageous situations so definitely consider that and then of course raise dead is one that you know you've got to have somebody who can do that so if the rest of your team doesn't have that if you don't have a cleric you may need to take this spell if uh, in case you've got some people that are uh, that are going down a lot and possibly even dying a lot because once you get to this level people are going to be dying and and dying is is going to be somewhat commonplace and you're going to need to be able to bring them back or at least someone is um, so definitely be prepared for that at bard 11 again we get no features here but we get our level six spells i only have two here uh, mass suggestion is one that's kind of a must take and auto's irresistible dance i think both of those are really really good for battlefield control um, and just for shaping things to the way that you need them to be uh bard 12 we get another asi or feat here and i'm going to go ahead and cap out our charisma um, this is going to help out all these new spells that we've gotten in order to help uh help them stick just a little bit more whenever we force all these saves bard 13 our song of rest gets upgraded to a d10 and we get seventh level spells Force Cage is a must bring here, and Prismatic Spray is another one I would suggest taking, um, but definitely make sure you take Force Cage. You got you got to take that one. It, it's a must bring. Um, Bard 14, we get Magical Secrets again, as well as our Battle Magic feature, which is cool. Battle Magic kind of just opens up our options a little bit more over our Crossbow Expert. So again, Crossbow Expert is kind of the same as us casting a cantrip um, as far as getting a little bit of damage on there without burning a slot. Um, so now with this, we can use a spell and then attack as a bonus action, or we can attack with the crossbow and then attack again as a bonus action. So no matter what, you can make an attack as a bonus action with your with your crossbow as long as you make an attack with either the spell with either a spell or the weapon, which is great. So you've got a ton of flexibility here. You've got attack and then cunning action. You've got attack, attack. You've got spell, then attack. Like you, you've got a bunch of things that you can do here. Um, and that's that's my whole thing is I wanna make sure that you can get in and out of where you need to, or you can do some damage if you need to. Um, and, and so I, I think you've got a lot of really cool options here. I, I think that's really, really neat. So for Magical Secrets, we can't forget about this. If you didn't take Wall of Force before, I would take it now. Um, it, it's definitely one that I would take at least somewhat in somewhere in your, uh, in your journey here. Um, Simulacrum, of course, is one that I always recommend. If you're not into the OP craziness, 
I would consider taking Draconic Transformation. Draconic Transformation is a fun one out of Fizzbands, and if you haven't read about it, it's really, really fun. You basically gain these Draconic properties. You can fly, you can spit a bunch of force damage. Uh, yeah, you've got some really cool stuff that you can do. And you know, if you, because we're not a flying race, now we can fly. Yes, it's late, but it's still fun. You know, it's better late than never to be able to be able to fly. So I think that that's a lot of fun. So definitely consider Draconic Transformation. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Bard 15, we get our Bardic Inspiration upgraded to a D12, its final form. And we have level eight spells. So Dominate Monster is always a good one. Feeble Mind and Mind Blank. We're getting into some, some crazy stuff now. At Bard 16, we're going to go ahead and cap out our Dexterity. So our Dexterity is now maxed out as well. So we have two 20s now, which is fantastic. Um, so plus five to that, that also boosts our armor class yet again, which is amazing. Um, and hopefully you've picked up a, a magical shield by this point. If not, your DM has not really given you a bunch of stuff then, um, because you definitely should have picked up a bunch of magic stuff by now. Um, you've, you've been at this for a very long time if you've, if you've been here this long. Bard 17, we get our Song of Rest also upgraded to its final form of a D12, and we get our ninth level spells, literally any of them. <laughs> All of them are good on this build. Um, I'm, I'm totally fine with any of the ninth level bard spells. They will definitely help you out for sure. And then of course, bard 18, our final magical secrets. You can literally take any spell, any two spells in the game. Uh, Wish, of course, is one that you definitely wanna take here. Um, the other one I would honestly take on this build is mass heal. Um, steal that off of the clerics spell list, especially if you don't have a cleric. Um, if you do, maybe pick something different, but yeah, I would go ahead and pick up mass heal here just to heal a bunch of health, just in case things are going completely not your way. You can kind of turn everything around and nullify the last few turns of whatever you've been fighting here at level 20. So I think that that's a lot of fun and definitely worth considering. So that is our build for today. Let me know what you think down below. So let's go ahead and go through our honorable mentions though before we end off today's episode. The first one is going to be a fighter multi-class. I think that you've probably saw this one coming, um, but I considered starting off with fighter. You get a lot of really cool benefits by starting off with fighter. You get a fighting, a fighting style, which is really, really great. You get proficiency with constitution saving throws, which is really nice being able to add just a little bit more to those saves. We kind of made up for it a little bit with our Warcaster, but technically you could have done both. You could have advantage and proficiency. So yeah, you could you could have done both. You could have doubled up. We could have had better armor proficiency, which could have been good, and as well as action surge. Um, you, we're not really a burst damage type of thing with a bard, really. Um, so action surge, I feel like, is just a little bit overrated. I guess we could have taken one level of fighter and one level of something else, but I don't think that that's necessarily worth it. I, I don't think you get enough out of out of another one in order to uh, to make up for it. So, yeah, I don't I don't think that I was ever really going to be able to do that. Um, next was paladin. You could get smites by level two which could have been kind of devastating. Um, being able to blow a spell slot and do a ton of damage like this could have been crazy. And if you wanted to have some burst damage, that's definitely the way to do it. Um, you, you definitely can do tons and tons of damage with this. So something to consider if you wanted to do that. Paladin gives you a lot of really good fun things. It keeps you charisma based as well. So you don't have to necessarily worry about it. Um, you would have to change your weapons because you do need to be strength based for Paladin rather than dexterity based. Um, so you just have to move a few things around there. So just keep that in mind, um, but definitely could be done. Warlock, of course, I'm, I'm sure was probably the number one uh, thing that you were probably thinking about in order to not need dexterity. Um, so you go with a Hexblade. The only thing with Hexblade is that it becomes a little bit redundant because you get a lot of the same proficiencies in your one level of Hexblade Warlock. So I feel like I'm wasting a lot of my features by doing that on a Valor Bard specifically because one of the biggest draws is the upgrade in armor, uh, but you've already got all of that from being a Valor Bard. So I just, I, f I feel like it's just a little bit redundant, unfortunately. Um, you would get some invocations, which are nice, 
but I think Cunning Action is just a little bit better than what you would get from those invocations. Um, and then finally, Sorcerer. Sorcerer has a lot of really cool, compelling things, especially if you went Aberrant Mind or Clockwork Soul. There's a lot of really cool features there, um, and you get some defensive spells. That's that's more of what I was thinking as far as as far as taking things like Shield or Absorb Elements, things that you don't normally would be able to get as a bard. Um, but I mean, in fairness, if you wanted to get access to something else like that, you could just take a, a, a different feat that gives you access to something like that. There, there are other ways to get a hold of Shield. Um, so if you really think you need that spell, you could have gone with one level of sorcerer, one level of fighter. But I, I, I don't really like that. I think that that just kind of dilutes the character a little bit. As far as feats go, I tried to fit sharpshooter in, um, but I, I just can't. I, I want to max out our stats, and I, I think that that's a little bit more important than our taking our minus five because if our stats are bad then taking that minus five isn't gonna really make as big of a difference because you're essentially neutralizing that bonus. So I would rather max everything out. It get, makes everything much more reliable. Um, and so yeah, I would, I would much rather, rather focus on that. And then heavily armored so that we could have our heavy armor proficiency was also one that I thought about. Couldn't quite fit, couldn't quite fit it in there without uh, without sacrificing something that I wasn't really willing to sacrifice, unfortunately. As far as races go, finally, I wanted to go Tabaxi. Tabaxi would have been a really fun rogue here. Um, just the mobility would have been nice. Um, you've got a little bit of a natural weapon. You get a climb speed. Um, there's a lot that you get here out of Tabaxi um, and would have given you some really key proficiencies as well that are really nice for this bard rogue combo. So you don't necessarily have to take them in your your background or from your from your class or anything like that they just come from your race so that could have been useful too and of course tiefling um, tieflings are really really nice here especially if you take one that can fly again talk to your dm about whether or not those kind of tieflings are allowed in your campaign um, but yeah that could definitely have have mixed some things up it gives you some freebies here and there and plus you know who doesn't love tieflings they're really awesome so that is today's video i hope you enjoyed later this week we are starting talking about the whispers bard and then we are done i need to know down in the comments below what you think we should do for our next build um, we need to either go with cleric which is our next official class but there's also blood hunter and i don't know whether or not i want to do blood hunter or cleric next so i need to know in the comments let me know. So until that next video, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We will see you later. Bye-bye.